What's going on, YouTube? It's Shaman Asriel, the one here. Um, hey, listen, I'm going to do a quick, do a nice little video for y'all tonight. I am recording in my bathroom because, unfortunately, the lighting across my house is a little poor right now. It's the best place I can get some lighting. Uh, normally, I don't record this late, but for some reason, I felt that I needed to record this video. So, y'all know how this works. Please, you know, make you make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. Click an ad. The ad generates the money, and the money will turn around and buy the better equipment. And, of course, I will supply the rest. It takes no money out of your pocket. And I'm not going to even put up a donation button where you can actually donate to me. And that go. Yeah, yeah, I know how that works. But I wanted to get straight right into it. If you throw a brick into a pack of dogs, the one that hollered is the one that got hit. And for a lot of y'all, this is true. It's true because when we talk about or we expose the, the perfunctory of the pro-black movement, clearly you Negroes get up in arms real quick, fast. Y'all love to throw around the word self-hater. You love to call people Uncle Tom, Uncle Ruckus, a black buffoon, a coon, sambo, sellout, whatever the fucking little pretty ass terms that you use completely out of context that you like to throw around, you use them. And I get that. I totally understand that. But it doesn't change the fact that what is stated is obviously the truth. Obviously it is. Because if it were not true, you people would keep your mouth shut. That's just the way that it is. I'm sorry. I would be doing myself and you a disservice if I didn't tell you what I saw exactly the way I saw it. It is what it is. Now, what do I mean by that anecdotal quote? Well, let me explain. You see, when, we, when I come out and I say, that the pro-black movement is an abject failure. It is something that these minstrels run around singing the praises of, talking about Africa as if it was some place that they were been a part of all their lives. It's who they are, where they come from currently, physically, and will return to. When I bring that up and expose that as a falsehood, as spiritual pipe dreams, you Negroes get upset. But let's pay attention to the facts here. Most of you have never gone to Africa. Most of you have never lived there. You do not have an African name. You do not know the culture of the place you want to sing the praises of. Your children are not named as Africans would name their children. You do not observe the customs of the people. You don't even know the history. In fact, the one thing you love to talk about is Kemet. Not realizing that the majority of Negroes that came over, your ancestors who came by the way of a slave trade, came from Western Africa. The majority of which. I'm willing to bet you. I'm willing to bet that. I could be wrong, but still, I'm willing to hypothesize that. Let me, let me modify that position. But getting back to the point, when you throw that brick and you see these people hollering, oftentimes it's because it fits the description. And what the pro-black movement does not do is it does not address the problems of the African-American Negro directly. You see, when you want to go from A to B, you simply just go from A to B. You don't go up and around B to go to C and then realize, hey, I still need to go to B, so let me turn back around and go back as if I was heading towards A. But this time, instead of going around the way I came, I'm going to go straight to B. That's the roundabout way the pro-black movement works. Don't believe me? Take a look outside in your own community. When you see more dudes standing outside during the middle of the day or walking around in the street, with the pants halfway off their ass when they should be at work or at school. When they spend more time 
chasing pussy and defining it, their masculinity by the length of their penis or by the fullness of their bosom and the rotundness of their ass, then clearly when I say these things about the black folk in America and they holler, it should be apparent that that's the group I'm talking about. And I'm willing to bet those Negroes, some of those Negroes, not all, not the majority, some, ascribe to this ideology. You see, my issue with these coon Negroes, these, sal these charlatans, these salesmen of black salvation, is that they will never, ever deal with the essence of the problem and the plights of the American Negro directly because they believe that if they dalliance them, they have a dalliance with a past that may or may not even be theirs, that it will solve their problems. And all it is doing is demonstrating the ass backwards thinking of the African American Negro. That is to say, he is more concerned about what's going on behind him than to look directly at the problem in his face and deal with it. You don't believe me? Once again, let's turn to this microcosm called YouTube. And we see that these Negroes that are upset because they don't like what you say in a video, they get up in arms, they get butt hurt, they start having their periods on the spot. Their, their punani start throbbing. That's what happens. And see, if these pro-blacks actually gave a fuck about the African-American Negro, instead of setting your black asses up in a pimp whore situation, you know, like your Protestant preachers do every fucking Sunday, what they would do is that they would speak out about the issues that deal that affect black folks on a day-to-day -day basis. I.e., we keep saying it every time, and you Negroes get mad, but just because you don't like the truth doesn't mean it's gonna disappear. But we say we bring up Chicago as the number one problem. And these Negroes don't want to deal with that. But you could talk about Ferguson, Missouri. That's what you could do but not realizing that Chicago has been a war zone for a long time. And if you Negroes actually gave a shit, you would do something about it. You see, these Negroes will talk about how you need to know who you are to fix your problems, but let's keep this shit real. Knowledge itself is knowing who I am as a person. See, Azriel the one knows that he's a father. He's a veteran. He's a man. He's a black man. He's a man who was proud. He's a man that is fearsome. He is a man that will give you the shirt off his back and will feed you too. Even if he is broke and ain't got a dollar in his pocket, he will find a way to get a dollar in his pocket and turn around and give it to you. That's me knowing what I am as a person. Now, I understand what they're talking about is at a macro level. But in order to get to that macro level, you got to start at the micro level. And at the micro level is the individual person. And this is where the pro-blacks take their ideology and go completely left at Albuquerque, ladies and gentlemen. I give you an example. Most of these pro-blacks have a, an obsession with arguing about who Jesus Christ really was. What did he look like? Now, I understand in some sense of feeling a, 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 a bond to your creator. You want to know if he looks like you. But on the very big picture, what is more important? What Jesus looked like or what did he do while he walked the earth? That's if you believe. So in no ways am I saying or I'm imposing this thought on you. If you believe, then it's important to you. If you don't, then you don't. Having said all that. What these Negroes will do is they will spend more of their energy debating about what he looked like instead of what did he actually teach. And I say that to say this, because when we talk about the problems in the black community, the Negro will focus on things that are completely and without a, fa without a doubt inconsequential. They mean nothing to the grand problem that's standing before each and every man, woman, and child. 
And what will these, these pro-black, these whole taps do? They will talk about the most esoteric of things, not understanding that the, the, the esoteric nature of what they're talking about means absolutely dick. When you measure it against the fact that our men are not becoming men, they're becoming sissified, buttermilk steamed up, sausage buffing, buck dancing, shoe shining, minstrels. The women are, are becoming the men and in the process of acting in the role of men are doing the things that men do. And because they're doing things that men do, they decrease their value because they're having so many damn kids that they're losing count and must fall to the system in order to make it. And of course, who could forget the fact that these young black boys are growing up without fathers and are doomed to relive the fucking mistakes that their father made. And that their daughters do not have a solid example of what love from men really is. And so they find it in the wrong places and are doomed to repeat the mistakes of their mother. And it goes on cyclically so far for the last 50 fucking years. Where the, the elders of our community have no accountability to the youth and the youth have no respect for the elders of the community. But let but wait if we just take our time and investigate the histories and the mysteries of Kemet and we dress up in Kente cloth and we cast off this white man system, we'll be all right. Wrong. You won't be all right. Just because it's a problem and you don't want to deal with it doesn't mean it's not going to still be a fucking problem. Because if you took your black asses to Africa and did the same thing, one of a few things is going to happen. Either those people over there going to make you get in fucking line with the program, you're going to end up missing, or your black ass is going to find yourself back in the States yet again. But guess what won't change? Your problem. And this is the issue I have with these pro-blacks. Because they spend too much time talking about things that don't fucking matter. And when people talk about things that do matter, you're a coon, you're a sellout, you're a black buffoon. Man, you can suck my entire dick with that bullshit. Miss me with it. If you so quote unquote cared, pro-blacks, here's the thing you could talk about. You can put pressure on the president for why he has not done a single thing for your black ass, yet you have voted him in the office twice. 98% the first election in 2008 and 95% in 2012. You could do that, but you don't do that. You could sit there and put pressure as to why these churches, the one on every corner in your community, is not helping out the poor. Yet you can find yet your pastors that drive in, up in to the churches with these hundred thousand dollars to cars and five thousand dollars suits. Oh, you could put money in the collection plate for him to take his ass to Jamaica, or to take himself to Tahiti, or to buy that nice little Rolex. In the house in the suburbs. Oh, you can do that. But you won't ask him, why can't you spend this money that we give you and do the work that Christ told you to do? Feed the poor, the hungry, the disenfranchised. See, these pro blacks can talk about how self knowledge, if you hate you hate yourself because you're not down with the cause, yet they won't march their black asses on these schools that are failing. And demand that their sons and their daughters get quality instruction with smaller class sizes and better paid teachers. So when you turn around and you expose these Casper the Friendly Ghost wannabes. When you turn around and you call out the fallacies in their argument. They get to hollering and barking, yelling and screaming. And it just goes to show when you throw a brick into a pack of dogs, the one that barked is the one that got hit. So when bricks get thrown by a few, there's a whole lot of you yelping. So I'm assuming there's a lot of people that don't like what's being said because it rings true. It's not my fault that I exposed the problem with your belief system. Not because I want you to change to the way I think, but I want you to realize that if you want to fix your problems, you really want to go somewhere, you can't ignore it. 
I give you another example. During my teenage years, I used to read upon different religions and study different religions. In fact, before I became a Catholic, I was I, I walked away, I apostatized from the church. And one of the things I noticed when I was reading about Wicca was that they tended, and I, I read this for myself, and one of the things that they do is that they don't acknowledge evil because to acknowledge, to give it a name is to give it power. See, in some respects, that makes some sense. But where does this fit in with black people? Well, black people would say if we don't acknowledge the problems in our community, if these hotep Negroes say to themselves, if we refuse to acknowledge what really is the problem, then it has no power. That's what it appears to me. I'm not saying that this is their position, but this is how it appears to me. And the problem with that philosophy is it doesn't go away because you don't want to acknowledge it. 72% of your children being born out of wedlock. If you don't do something about it, it won't go away on its own. When more of your men find value by their penises or by the ability to rap, play a sport or drive, have ostentatious displays of wealth, instead of actually building real wealth and building lasting families and lasting things for their community, just because you don't want to acknowledge it doesn't mean it goes away. That's my problem with you coon-ass Negroes. When your sons are lacking fathers and the people as a whole now perish for lack of knowledge because you don't want to acknowledge it doesn't mean it's not true and it won't go away. That's just the way it is. I'm sorry if you don't like it. I think I'd be doing you a disservice if I didn't sit here and tell you the fucking truth. I really do. But Dios y mi madre, I swear it, I would do you a disservice. But yet and still, these Negroes will never address it. They will take the most roundabout way possible. And meanwhile, we are dying. We will go the way of the dinosaur in another century. And those Negroes who have common sense to survive know that the only way they can survive is to distance themselves from you coon ass hoteps. And instead of figuring out why your brother's leaving you to the wayside and why some of these brothers are becoming successful and your black ass is being left to the wayside. Instead of asking the question on what you could do to get in unity with your brothers, you simply say he sold you out or he's not black enough. Matter of fact, I do want to, I'm going to ask that in another video. Matter of fact, that's a good, that's a good point to make a segue for the next video, a couple of videos. I want to take a moment and pause and let you guys know what's going on on this channel. I will be doing a video or a video series called First Year Father. And it will be my video talking about my very first year as a parent. I will be sharing with you guys some more of my personable experiences raising my one-year-old son. Some of the highlights, some of the despondent lows, some of the things I wanna share with you guys is gonna be very personal in nature, all of it very powerful, and all of it with the purpose of trying to show black men that fatherhood is the most important thing that we can do and we can contribute to our society. Not in the act of creating these children, but raising them, building them, molding them, shaping them to become the pillars of our community, to become bedrock of black civilization and to become something greater than what the world expects us to be. I'm also going to do a video, ser a video series in the coming months that will focus on uh, addressing some of the issues that you guys feel needs to be addressed in the community. And for that to work, I really want you guys to feedback with me. So I'm gonna leave my email that's specifically for this channel 
in the link in the description of this video. And I want you guys, if you enjoy it or you like the idea, send me things to talk about. Not just news stories, because that's Tommy's bit. I really don't want to step on somebody else's toes talking about the news. But let's just bring up things like job issues. And I want to actually spend some time on that. Thirdly, and I didn't forget this, Rogue Archer, in case you're watching. I will do try to do a segment of a moment of black history where I talk about black the, the, the accomplishments of black people. Some people seem to believe that if you put more positivity out there, it will outweigh the bad. I'm being honest. I don't think that's a very healthy way of addressing a problem. But I do believe that there are people that don't know some things. And I think that showing historically that black people have done things that are outstanding, would it won't be a thing of, well, let's ignore the, positive, uh, the negative for the positive. But it will prove to you that your ancestors, your fathers and your grandfathers and his father were able in a society that was clearly set up to destroy him, he was able to maintain some prosperity. I think at this point I'm running about 20, over 21 minutes, so I don't really want to continue on further. Uh, I may continue doing, I may, if it needs to go to a part four, I may do a part four. That's up to you guys. If I can get 150 likes, I'll do a part four of this series. Uh, it was supposed to be in three parts, and I do apologize for taking so long to do it. But with being with parenting coming on and school going on, I really haven't had the time to coalesce my thoughts and put them to video. So when you come to this channel looking for change solutions, change starts with one. Thank y'all for watching. Be blessed. Be safe. If I jumped out of my video very abruptly, I do apologize. Peace.